Hi guys, this is RC and today we would be learning about the reseller platform on uh, Appipi. So once you register with Appipi as a reseller, you will have to go to the Appipi website to get in. So you put in your uh, details here into appipi.com and uh, um, I'm going to show you a demo version of it. Put in the password and log in. Now this typically is the reseller dashboard that you see here. So you've got the user segment, the user app segment. So these are your users who would be creating apps with you. The apps that they create would all be here. Your configuration settings go here. Your coupons get managed here if you're creating any. And then there is a CMS platform that you can use for creating text pages and adding to your app and your plan goes here and your payment history comes here. Now let's get each of these uh, quickly. Let's go to my users. Okay, so this shows you uh, a list of all your users in terms of their details, the email, the state, the country, the date of registration with the time, uh, the number of app counts, the credits that they have, and uh, what is the status? Is the user live currently or you want to deactivate him? Now you can even edit the details here by going into the section and make the relevant changes if you wish to change the password or something else like the email ID, you can all do it here. So these are admin rights, remember, and this shows the number of apps uh, this user has created and uh, the balance that remains. So the total balance that you have as a reseller is seven out of which you have given two to this user. That's what it shows here. You can add new user, you can add new users from this uh, tab here, and uh, create them the way you like. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one. So your user apps will all get shown here in terms of their app IDs, their names. Uh, who created it and the date of creation and when uh, did the last update happen. Uh, it also shows whether uh, this is being featured in the marketplace, whether uh, this is a featured app on your platform and the current status. Uh, you can choose to lock this user or you can delete it. You can use to, uh, you can even delete this app or lock it from here. Okay, uh, now the most important part is the configuration settings here, uh, which is uh, the brain behind your reseller platform. So this decides what your domain looks like, uh, the payment details, SMTP and the other general settings. Now let's go to this one by one. Now here in the website settings, you actually define the URL for yourself. So I have put in a demo URL here saying this is demo myappareer.com. I can even choose to give in my custom site URL. So if you have a site called abc.com, uh, you have to just put it here as a custom domain. So you ensure that if you want to put your custom site URL, you will have to have the A record to point to this particular IP here. So uh, once you have done uh, this mapping for the A record, this custom URL would come into effect, otherwise it will not work. So ensure that if you're putting in a custom site URL, you're also setting the A record right in terms of the IP, which is shown here. Okay. Now you're supposed to give in your office address, the support phone numbers here. So you can give the numbers that you want people to call you on. And uh, for your site, the logo goes here. Okay, so this basically is a logo here. So right now you're seeing Appipi. This would get uh, replaced by the logo that you put here. Now, when you send an email out to your users, uh, you also have a logo there on the on that email. Or. So that logo can be changed by uploading it here. And uh, you can also upload a favicon image. Now, favicon image is what's shown on top here sometimes when you have a window open. So uh, that kind of uh, image, once, once you want to change that, you can also upload that small image here, which would be shown on the top of the window whenever it is open. Okay. Next, you go to payment details. 
So guys, uh, uh, in the payment details, you have two options. One is a PayPal account and the Stripe settings. Now, basically for enabling users to use the credit cards and debit cards to make payments to your account, you will have to use Stripe settings. And in case you want them only to make payments through PayPal, then uh, this is the option that you choose here. I can enable or disable each one of them. So I can choose whether I want a PayPal or I want them to use their credit cards and debit cards for making a payment for which I would have to use a Stripe account. Okay, that's a pretty cool one because you have options to have a payment platform through PayPal or through Stripe. Now, basically, if you're going through PayPal, so you'll have to go to the PayPal site and register there and create your merchant ID for which the entire tutorial uh, it's already been done so you can input your PayPal business email ID here for receiving payments uh, and uh, for Stripe similarly you have to go to the site and register with them to get a secret key like one shown here and once you have created the Stripe ID and uh, you have added an endpoint you basically have to add that key here all right now, once you've done those, uh, you can now decide the price of your app. Now, depending on uh, what your marketing strategy is, uh, you can decide uh, the per unit price that you would be charging your customers for this app. And that price goes here. So here it is 40 right now. I can make it whatever. I can make it $1. I can make it 2 I can make it 5 or whatever else, 15 Okay. And I go and say, save an X. Now, uh, the best part is here... Uh, we haven't made anything compulsory for you to put in so even if you don't put in this step you can simply skip it and you can go to the next one all right now if i want my email id to go from uh, a particular email which uh, is my support email then i'll have to put it here and i'll have to put in the smtp settings here so that uh, this particular email id can become functional so I'll have to put in the host, uh, the user, the password and the security type and the port number and the support email ID here. So uh, once I put in here, the best thing that I need to do is to test it. Unless I test it, I will never know if my, uh, if my submissions are correct. So uh, you must check it before you start uh, making your app live and you make this platform live for users. So basically the idea is to get a support email uh, up and functional and running for you, which is your email and not something that's uh, going on from the Appypower platform. Uh, so typically uh, the email that goes would be from a no reply at app mail service. So this is what it is by default. To change that into a customized one, you would need to change the SMTP settings. But once you do that, uh, do not forget to test it from here. Uh, to an email ID of your choice to ensure that it works. Okay, now the next step is the general settings. Now a lot of times we have our Facebook pages, images and uh, videos uploaded. So to make those work in the app, you will have to ensure that the general settings here have the Facebook app ID. For that, uh, you will need to go to Facebook and create an app ID and secret key for which uh, you have uh, the entire tutorial here. So uh, once you go to the developer section of Facebook, you will have to log in and have to create a new app button and you'll be asked to choose a platform. And having done that, uh, you will have to create the app ID and uh, copy that app ID and secret key to uh, the screen here for it to work. Okay, similarly, if you have uh, sound files uh, from SoundCloud so you have to put the client ID here and that's how you do it in terms of registering with them on the developer link and uh, creating a new app there and choosing those settings to save the button all right the next thing is the email ID at which you want your emails from users to come in so the app submitter email so if your app has been submitted and you want a particular email ID to be receiving the mails about your app publishing request from your customers uh, there this is where you put in your email so for people who are submitting apps and who want you uh, to 
uh, publish them would send your request at this email ID for you to take charge okay now this is the next button which talks about allowing users to register okay now I can create a circle of my own users and not allow anyone to register on their own and uh, I might like to use this closed circle only for the apps that I'm creating now I also need to have an option to allow the users to register and log in on their own so uh, depending on what I choose here I can allow uh, registration from users or close it for them so pick what you want now uh, when I open the reseller website the home page has a meta title here on top so uh, I can change what comes here by default so this is what comes here by default demo mobile apps and uh, this is the text that comes on the screen once I log in uh, so I can change it here and I can make it look something else I can say uh, my platform and I can change the texture and say okay this looks cool okay and as you save a next all right now if I want to change uh, the settings in terms of some coupons that I'm creating so I can create them here I can edit them and I can deactivate them or activate them all from here so if you had a coupon existing it would come here I can create one by giving it a name the code uh, the validity dates from which date so I can give it a date uh, the kind of discount that I'm offering on that coupon whether it is a flat rate or a percentage that I'm talking about and whether this coupon is active as of now uh, once I've done that, I have to click on save to create it. All right. Okay. Now the CMS page is a pretty interesting one because it helps you add pages to your uh, website. So to the platform that you've created. So if you want to add terms and conditions, a privacy policy, more about us and something else, uh, you can choose to add it here or edit the ones that are already existing there. So it's a pretty cool one to create something of your own. Okay, so this is what your platform looks like once uh, you log in and uh, you have created one for yourself. Uh, so when you've created something on Pi and created a reseller platform, this is what the platform would actually look like to your users. So see here, I had changed the text here saying coolest platform on earth. And here the meta title says uh, my platform. So we changed it last time if you remember on the Pi platform and that's how it gets reflected here. So here you go about the about us section the subscription the features so yeah so this is how it looks to your users and uh, since we didn't put in a logo there had we put one it would have come here on the left side of the screen